I hope it happens that at some point he's he's done something that, or someone has done something that the other person isn't happy with. So the contention. And I really hope you're on the wrong point. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's two ends of a spectrum here. There's the collaboration whereby we both go, oh, what you do is fine, what you do is fine, and we end up with a kind of bland middle ground where we're both inserting things. Or the other end is where we're both so precious about the material that we just end up putting two separate pieces. In looking at this, finding a way to deal with your sheer, um, I'm not sure what the word is, but there is, there are so many different types of material. And there isn't so many, there's about four, and they keep intercoming, but they come back so quickly. Mm -hmm. What happens if you were to... Play one of them for a long time? Yes, and then, well, and then, over, and then <laughs> overblow all the other ones into it. Exactly. <laughs> These were just tropes that I was thinking I'm going to give to Scott and he can do whatever he, whatever he... I might discard that. Well, interestingly, these were these are the... Discard it! These are the bits that are fucking consistent for, you know... It's got more than one note happening in, in a sequence. It's, it's, it's got weird. lots of repetition, come on. You've, <laughs> you've tried to anticipate him, you've tried to be really polite and nice to him, and now if he throws out your material, you're already <laughs> cursing more than you were five minutes ago. Yeah, I, I, I can have an interesting mess with the that. The rhythmic... Because the rhythmic aspect is probably the most me part about this. So if you were... Obviously, if you were to completely overhaul it... Um, your sense be, of self would be negatively impacted. I, <laughs> I looked at two different types of space, one which was a sort of spatialised notation and one which was a, a pretty much the way I devised the, the space for you, but with my stuff inside both of these spaces this time round. I mean, that's the other thing. When I did it out like this, you have all the metric stuff on one page and all the non-metric on another. Yeah. The idea that they can be interspersed, of course, was yeah. fine. Yeah. Oh. So there are two types of material that were being written simultaneously. Oh, I see. And so my thinking was actually this notion that you would insert something in yeah. here or in here or pull that out like that. But looking at what you'd given me and thinking, well, what's he expecting from me here? If he's given me a 4-8 bar, is he... It, I'm, well, I'm going to have to get all four of those eights in there. And if there's a five in the time of three in this, well, I'm going to have to make sure all five of those are really doing something. Mm. Well, that's good to know, actually, because that means then when I attack this, I'm going to I am going to do what you expect, which is draw things out. Would it be possible to start start loud on the high note and then let it underblow and then bring out that middle note? So happy. <laughs> because <laughs> mime and mixed tastes go into this. We write the music that we want to write, and then we have this tension of working to each other and having to accommodate the other person's tastes too, which means sometimes discarding stuff, sometimes compromising, sometimes putting your foot down and saying, no, 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 this has to stay in the piece. Mm -hmm. And I think we're trying to extend that to you as well, but it's much more unusual for the performer to have that level of agency in a piece Yeah, that makes you a co-composer. <laughs> Are you imagining much faster than that? But he also, he, he's giving you also permission to get rid of things. Hmm. Which to me sounds really scary, like the idea of taking another composer's work, even if it's just a sketch, and having to, making that decision. Is that what you do? You no. can go in and you can take things I, out? I hope so. But I, no, that's really not my... <laughs> well, you, you I mean, have I've, that power now as well. Yeah, well, I've, I've said a lot more about what, what I like and what I don't like. Um in this session than I think I ever have beforehand. Because the underblown, I can't do it a, a loud dynamic. Because... No, the underblown will have to be quiet. So yeah. it'll be this very loud, loud gesture. And then, and then very quiet. Okay. Well, okay, what I did now, what I did just now, I was trying to play through, I was trying to focus on the glissando through, yeah. rather than, yeah. which I think works better, actually. Or for me, it, worked, it was more clear. That's the gesture was more clear. Wanted. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's just what we're trying to tease apart. The tension between the dynamics demanding a reattack or the glissando demanding it to be fluid. So it's not really like subito, it's more like whoop. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's kind of okay, I think. Yeah. Again, I think that's a, there's an ambiguity in the notation that is, that is not a problem for me. The ambiguity that isn't a problem for you. Yeah, yeah. If this is a collaborative piece, then 
It might become a problem for me. It won't be a problem for me to perform because I know you. But if this goes to another clarinet player, yeah. but why not have like a like a difference between your cres uh, crescendo, decrescendo, and you know these really like the ones that like like, like the Fernie Ho ones. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. That would I mean, also that would be possible. That, 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 that is actually the notation that I would expect for. Or the other way of doing it would be to not have the grace note stem. Yeah. So if yeah, it yeah, simply yeah. said Sforzando and it had a black note head, yeah, which is more in keeping with this notation type anyway. I mean, one of the things that I've noticed in the last couple of years from playing a lot with string players is that notation means different things, you know? And yeah. so I think being a bit flexible with adjusting your notation to what a wind player would expect to see wouldn't be the end of the world, would it? Well, no, but you couldn't use the Fernio thing here because there is no crescendo. But there is. I am. I am doing one. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. There's no way to do that without doing one. Yeah. Okay. Without having a rear tank. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that could be done. That. That's perfectly viable. I really thought that would be no problem. I'd be like, yeah, scratch that bar. That's not going in. Out you go. But on the principle that then we'd come back together and he'd say, no, no, I really want that back in. And you know, we'd have an argument about it over a yeah. beer. And and eventually, some stuff would go in, and some stuff wouldn't. It would be much easier f to discard. If you said discard. I mean, actually, it's not so normal that I will say, like, I think this actually works much better. I like the detail much better when we do it in this register with fingerings. Yeah. Because normally, normally, all I get to say is, this works, this doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> In this register, it's a bit tricky. To, I can't bend that yeah. far. Yeah, that's what I think. I think as the piece comes closer to crystallizing into something, there'll be more places where you can say, well, actually, that I, I don't really think that works at all, or that that isn't something you're particularly interested in playing. Composers write stuff, and they give it to players, and you hope that the player likes it. But that's not saying, oh, I hope you like my work. Well, what I mean is, I hope I have written something that you enjoy and want to play. <laughs> The B flat is really like the limit. So they interfere with each other. Yeah. That's really interesting though. That so it just sounds like. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, not quite as interesting, is it? I think the first the first three are really easy, and then it gets tricky. But yeah, yeah. but that first three is plenty because yeah. it's it, the way you're doing it there was so smooth. At the same time, to say this doesn't work, I won't do this. To me, that is actually just not being unprofessional. So to find a way to have a dialogue about, you know, what I like and what I don't like. I mean, as a as a as someone said to me recently, it's very easy to find cool sounds, but that you know that doesn't make a piece. In terms of timeline, the gig is February. Is that 12th right? of February. Twelfth of February. Yeah. So between now and then, Mick and I need to have a lot more meetings. So basically, the next stage is as soon you as have we are... to, you have to say, "This is a. It has to be done by then." I think. Okay. I think you yeah. can dictate that. How do I take what Mick has done and add things to this? Or, or, or how do I break what he's done? Do I want to break what he's done? Uh, and that was actually more difficult than I thought it would be. I thought I'd be very. I find it very easy to take this other person's work and just kind of break it up and do what I wanted to do it, but uh, I, it was harder. And what it meant was more that we needed to have more conversations about it. So the summer will be full of conversations. Mm -hmm.